Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on in the Sports Talk with Broads. It's a little strange because normally, as you head into week four of the NFL season, there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of arguments. There's a lot of frustration. What needs to change? What's going wrong? How come they're two and one instead of three and oh? How come they're one and two instead of two and one? But right now, you're just riding the high because while there are some things to nitpick, realistically, if you're complaining about some special teams things, you're in a pretty good spot, right? I mean, the Eagles have a good opportunity to smack Jacksonville and Doug Peterson right in the mouth on Sunday afternoon at the link, and I can't wait. It's a weird position to be in, I can't lie. And I also think it's strange that I'm going to start off the show by giving Jonathan Gannon a lot of credit. When you look at some of these drives, whether it's the third quarter or the fourth quarter, they really did milk the clock out and allow Washington to score zero points. There was a 15-play drive where Washington went 93 yards, which got 6 minutes and 27 off the game, and they came away with nothing. There was a 13-play drive that went 30 yards, which was 5 minutes and 11 seconds. They scored zero points. So 11 minutes and 38 seconds. Think about how much time that is in-game to come away with a big old goose. Now, due to what I believe is more of a knock on how the Eagles handled it, they got a safety. So technically, within that, they scored two points. But I think that more reflects what should have changed with the Eagles when they were that close to the goal line. I thought they put the quarterback and the offense in a position to fail. And then, well, that happened. I'm not just saying that based off of where the ball was after the defense makes a stop. I'm talking more about maybe what the play call was in that circumstance. But if you're going to force the other team to use that much time and they're coming away with nothing because of the way T.J. Edwards, Avante Maddox, Bradbury, Darius Slay, Kaiser White's, The way that they're holding the fourth down. And Carson Wentz has nowhere to go. You look at the way that they suffocate the other team. And the way that they play so strong in coverage. It's a totally different beast this year. And that's why you saw the defensive line being able to eat. Because someone like Carson Wentz is always going to hold on to the ball. Looking for a special play. And looking for a big time bomb. And then here's Brandon Graham turning back the clocks. Here's Fletcher Cox. Uh, You know, you look at his stats this year compared to last year. It's pretty damn wild. Now, I don't necessarily know if they're going to be feasting to the same level against other teams because I do have to be honest here. There's a correlation with Mr. Carson Wentz and how much he finds himself in trouble And seeing 17 quarterback hits. My favorite was when Brandon Graham came around after he already got the ball away and he just shoves him into the damn ground and makes him eat it. Hysterical. It's funny watching Washington fans, and yeah, there are some out there, surprisingly, convince themselves that it's just the O-line. Oh, yeah, we've been through it. Trust me. They're going through the stages of grief. Is that what it's called? The, how, the, how many stages of grief there is? And they're just walking themselves through until they get to the realization that this dude just ain't it. But when you go from some of the quarterbacks that that organization has plugged in to that position over the years, I mean, Carson Wentz is going to look like Madonna in her prime. Just say it. Jalen Hurts, second year in the offense. Are we giving that enough praise? Or are we acknowledging that enough for his growth? Because you think about Alabama, Oklahoma, Doug Peterson era. Now you're going with Shane Steichen and Nick Sirianni. There hasn't been much time for him to adapt to the same plan and get year after year after year of something similar In quite some time. There is change, though, because when you slot in an A.J. Brown and you bring in other players, 
it's not the same offense as last year's just based off of what you have to throw to. Yes, concepts can be the same and, and things of that nature, and it helps out the execution. I'm just saying, when you add an A.J. Brown, your entire offense does become a different weapon. So there are elements that change because of personnel, even though you're working under the same coaching staff. But I'm sure you take that payoff compared to a new playbook, new scheme, new word, new words, new uh, verbiage, you know? But there's just something about the way that this kid works. There's quotes about Shane Steichen and and him talking about how much Jalen Hurts is obsessed with the game. And we got a clip that the Eagles tweeted out of Jalen Hurts post game. And I want you guys to hear it. I'm sure some of you have. It was all over the Eagles social media pages, but it just gives us a little bit a little bit more about him because he always gives us the boring clichés about working hard and rent being due, but we're, we're kind of seeing a different side of him and we now can understand why the team is obsessed with kind of who he is as a person. When you look yourself in the mirror as a man and you say I'm going to control the things I can control, that's how you get better. That's how you get better. That's how you take steps. That's how you take steps. But AJ said this on the sideline, and I really feel like, okay, we got a good football team. We know when we control the things we can, we damn good. Damn good. But we got to go to work every day. We got to go to work every day to clean up this little that's holding us back so we can be who the we meant to be. But now, we got it done here! I love y'all boys, man. We a family, man. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. That's unreal, man. I love hearing that type of shit. I'm fucking fired up, baby. I'm ready to rock. Uh, There's just a difference between what we hear and what the team hears. And I'm not surprised, right? Obviously, the dude is a cool dude, and he does carry himself a certain way, and there's something to be said about his personality, his fashion, all of it. I mean, there's something to the coolness of Jalen Hurts that we probably assumed we didn't see, but now we're starting to a little more and more, and I wonder if the team is starting to realize that too because he's acknowledging what's going on here right he's becoming that face of the franchise where in years past and in other circumstances it was more about him having to prove it now there's more of a confidence level of i am that guy and now it's starting to bleed into the fan base now we're starting to believe and, and i think that just creates a new sense of everything in that locker room that we're now realizing what they see and it's becoming one family and one connection with who they are. And that was my biggest knock throughout the offseason when I was bitching and complaining, knowing if they won football games, it wasn't a big deal, but it's August and that's all we had to talk about when it come to when it came to the Philadelphia Eagles was we, we know nothing. Who are you? What's your personality? What is your identity going to be? Well, it's starting to blossom in front of our eyes and clips like that, you know, you just see. And I can't imagine Carson Wentz, with all due respect, getting any sort of fellas all hyped up like that. <laughs> like that. It's a different type of beast when you grow up with the Alabama. With the Nick Saban lifestyle of how to handle the press. That's why you get some of what you get. But are we starting to you starting to creep into it a little bit? I think the Eagles media team knows something. There's reasons why these type type of clips are getting thrown out there. I think Howie Roseman, some other people are starting to put together some numbers. Just saying. Just saying. I'm embracing every moment of this Jalen Hurts hot run right now, this hot streak that he's starting the season off with, and I believe it will continue. There are some out there that are trying to put everything down. And what I mean by that is, well, wait till the cold weather comes. Can he throw it then? Why? Why are you doing that? And honestly, with everything he's shown us this year, is he going to answer the test when it's cold? My guess is probably. Yeah, probably he will be able to make those throws. Did you expect him to make some of the throws he's making now? Did you expect him to look as sharp as he is right now? Did you expect him to be at the top of the MVP race like he is right now? Between him and Lamar Jackson and two, all these quarterbacks that are shining. Probably not. 
So if you're just going to keep saying, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. At some point, just enjoy. If, if you're not going to enjoy the quarterback play now, when are you? If you're going to see a quarterback deliver and dominate, where this offense is dominating, taking big leads, double-digit leads, scoring 24 points, taking control, if this doesn't excite you, then I just don't know what is going to excite you. Because if, if that's the case, if that's you, if there's a bar of perfection, and you're going to hate until you reach that perfection, well, then I don't know if you're ever going to be satisfied. Right now, in September, you're going to say, I don't know, man, if it's cold weather, is he going to be okay? That's what you're thinking about? You're not thinking about Jacksonville and Doug Peterson next week at home? You're not talking about the schedule, the, the recent schedule? If we get to December, and we're in a game where the winds are absurd, where it's snowing, where it's negative 20, and you want to talk about that leading up to the week, and maybe it's football Friday leading up to that Sunday afternoon game, and you want to bring up that maybe you're looking to see if he can be crisp then, fine. If you're bringing anything up now, you're just reaching, and you're in denial. Why are you in denial is really my question. There shouldn't be any reason to be in denial when you're looking around what's going on in the NFC or really what's going on all around in football. That doesn't, let me be clear, that doesn't mean what the Eagles are doing doesn't deserve respect. I watched Dallas and I watched the Giants, and I got to give Dallas credit because when you lose your quarterback early, it's probably easy to fold. And their defense does make some plays. I'm not afraid of them. There's not big fear, but they didn't break down and they didn't shut it off. And I'm just saying that, It's easy to, and they didn't. So what will they look like when Dak is back? I don't know. Could they be a wild card team because the NFC isn't very good? You lose playmakers in Amari Cooper, you know, C.D. Lamb. He had a big drop over the middle, but he also had the one-handed catch in the end zone. He's definitely a great talent, but you're not what you once were when you had everyone with Gallup, Amari Cooper. You look back and you go, holy hell, that was something, huh? The Eagles are damn good, and there's not a lot of good football happening right now. Both are true. See, they also make teams that are better than what they look like look bad, if that sentence made sense. I'll put it to you this way. The Minnesota Vikings are better than what they look like against the Eagles. The Eagles are just so scary that the Minnesota Vikings look bad, that Kirk Cousins had no idea what to do, that Justin Jefferson was beaten down by Darius Slay. And he was filled with frustration. And you could see it as he was putting his hands up. And he was bothered by one of the first early plays on the left side of the the field when he was bitching that there should have been a flag. That's how it's going to be all day. That's how it's going to be. So you better try something different because Slay is going to win. That, That was the message. That was the tone right from the rip. And he couldn't answer. But Minnesota's good. Good enough where you, they might even win the division. I don't know what Green Bay is. They lost a lot of talent, but it's also Aaron Rodgers. People pretend like the Lions can have a shot at it, but I see them more as like maybe a six-win team, which is a big jump from where they once were. And that offense is doing things that maybe people did expect or didn't expect, uh, expect depending on where you know you thought they'd be. I just don't like trying to rain on the Eagles parade just because uh, there's two statements that are correct at the same time. That's how I see it. Because it's not as if the Bills stink, the Ravens stink, even though the Giants do. Don't even know how they started off 2-0. Daniel Jones blows, though. I was listening to some New York sports radio late night when I was getting some things done the Michael K show, and they're talking, oh, man, he showed some balls. He showed some heart. He was tough. Probably not the guy, but I admire him going out there and running around because the offensive line was in shambles. They just kept t- talking so positive about him. And Okay, yeah, he did leave everything out there, and I'm sure that that's easy to, to kind of pray, but the tone told you everything you needed to know, right? I mean, it's like you're, you're babying him. Like, oh, he gave us what he had. Yeah, what he had stinks. Daniel Jones stinks. 
He just lost a big time battle at home against Cooper Rush. There's plenty of other issues. Wide receiver dropping passes, making a lot of money. You lose Sterling Shepard. Barkley seems to be your only uh, sort of offense right now, besides him and Daniel Jones running for his life. But still, I mean, come on. Bad, bad, bad football team. That's why I wanted them to go 3-0, and to hurt Dallas, because that 3-0 and would have been the fakest 3-0 and I've ever seen in my damn life. This is the Eagles division to take by storm, and there's no excuses otherwise. All right, we're going to the Anytime Hotline. Take some calls, read some messages, react a little bit. All right, here we go. We'll kick things off. What's up, bros? Yo, it's been a minute now. Let me hold the mic real quick, bros. I can't say I'd rather would have, you know, Bill's QB or a Mahomes QB, which is crazy to say. And that's why I've been sold on this. He's just he's just more Philly, bros. Like, seeing Carson Wentz in 2020 really showed us how irresponsible you know, bad ball management, especially just the ball management, the responsibility in the media, all that shit. It all comes around. And the heaven that, use a, use a big word, just the position from that 2020 Carson Wentz to that 2021, you know, Jalen Hurts with the ball management, especially with that media, with all of that, he's just more feeling he belongs. I wanted to see him, no matter what, just because of who he is and give him significant time because of who he is. It might have been a proving year. He might be proving it right now, but... I would have still liked to have given him more time to get in the young players, having fun with the ball, because that's what he does best. And I don't think that anybody, like, say something better than a young Philly team with a Jalen Jalen Hurst at the helm, that will always be a bully team that's always scary to anybody, no matter what, even if we are having a midseason. And that's what I want to see. I want to see some fight, bros. I don't want to see that Carson Wentz lay on the back, never no fight, always talking this. Oh, there's nothing special about that Philly D. And then get it's that nine times. Like, I don't want to hear that, bro. I just want to see Jalen Wentz, Jalen Hurts. No, I did it again. And I want to see him for a long haul, even if he does have a long period of a downturn, bro. I'll be around more. I mean, let me get off the mic, but uh, I'll be around more. I'm going to talk to you, bro. All right, appreciate you chiming in, man. Yeah, absolutely. Call in a lot more. I want to hear from you. I guess the moral of the story there was you just want to see Hurts through the highs and the lows. That's kind of how I summarize that call. And, yeah, I mean, at this point, that's what it is. See, this even goes back to last year. Uh, if Jalen Hurts struggles, at least you have Gardner Minshew. No, no, no. It's not about Gardner Minshew. Everyone knows what Gardner Minshew is. You have to learn about who this quarterback is, and he started off with a real big high. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's what it's all about. I mean, I like Jalen Hurts right now. The thing is, and you sound like a Jalen Hurts supporter from way back because you said you wanted to see more of him maybe during that Carson era, but I think they handled that as best as they could at some point they had to make the decision to sit him should they have sat Carson Wentz a couple games before you could have made the argument but he was also getting paid big bucks and he was your franchise guy so kind of hard to to do that but whatever they did it I, I just here's what I won't take or stand when it comes to the guys that have been saying Jalen's the guy the moment he was drafted based off of what other than he won well, not really. He got his job taken from him, and then he went to Oklahoma after his job was taken from him. I, I did like the way he handled some things at Alabama, and he stayed strong, and he stayed with for I'm just saying, like, there were things when he gets replaced. Okay, okay. Last year, he missed a lot of wide-open plays. He did not see the field well. There were a lot of reasons to feel discouraged about him, while also some things to feel encouraged about. Nobody saw him being MVP unless you just said it just to say it. That's the difference. Well, I mean, I think he's going to... Why? Well, because I just feel it. Well, just feeling it because you like Jalen Hurts isn't really substance. You're just a fan of Hurts, and you're just saying it. When you objectively view the football, there's reasons why to not believe he would have been an MVP. Now, it's phenomenal he made that leap, sort of like with Tyrese Maxey. And I'll bring up the numbers just so we can actually see it. When Tyrese Maxey finished his first year with the Philadelphia 76ers, and these are rare, by the way, to have this type of jump. That's why um, I'm saying it. It's, it's, I'm giving you another comparison but these comparisons are not very normal 
He shot the ball 30% from three in his first year, shooting under two three attempts per game. He comes back his following campaign, shooting close to 43, a 13% jump from behind the arc, taking double the amount of threes per game. No one in their right mind would expect that level of jump in one offseason because it's actually literally almost impossible. I think the jump that Jalen Hurts has provided for us is on that level of, wow, what the hell? Now, maybe you could have went down the path that he works hard. Like, the way that he approaches football would set him up for better success. But even the ones questioning if he was the guy, even those, and I was one of them, acknowledge that he'd be better. It's how much better. We had James Palmer on The Fanatic yesterday, covers the the uh, the NFL for NFL Network, and that was one of his quotes too. It's like, look, I expected him to take a leap. I expected him to add to his game, and especially after Howie Roseman's additions, you knew the offense would look and feel different. But it was about how much of a jump. Well, I mean, you go from this to an MVP, and it's like, let's rock. But that's enough negative on the... I felt like that was maybe a little bit too negative for the appreciation that Jalen Hurts is going for. I'm with you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm riding the highs right now with Jalen Hurts. I'm excited to kind of watch him play out this season. I'm now in. I can't wait to watch him on Sunday mode. And in the beginning, it was, all right, I can't wait to figure out who Jalen Hurts is. Those are two totally different mindsets to enter a Sunday afternoon with. Let's take another call. Yo, bro, how about them birds, baby? Now, we had uh, another game with zero points in the second half. That's a little bit concerning, but I, I don't know. At least uh, the birds won. Let's go, birds. Let's go, Phil's. I'm not as worried about the second half yet. I know it's there. I see that it's there. I don't think it's going to be the downfall of this football team over the long window over the 17 games. When you're up 24 nothing, you have the opportunity to do what I just told you. You can run 28 plays if you're the opposing squad and milk 11 minutes and 38 seconds off the clock to come away with zero points. And, and that's just... That's how it goes. You're you're playing the game based off of being up 24 points. If the score is 21-21, 24-21, and it's late third quarter, okay. Jeff Mosher brought this up to me. You score your 24 points in the in the in the one quarter, right? If you scored seven, 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 and three, are you happy? Because then those other quarters aren't as good offensively. To score on those consecutive drives. It doesn't feel the same way if it's a a touchdown sprinkled in in between each quarter. It's like, oh, why is the offense stalling in the second? Oh, they responded in the third, but they didn't score a touchdown until late fourth. Or they didn't kick a field goal. Now it's spaced out over all the quarters. You don't feel as good about how explosive this offense could be compared to scoring as frequently as they did to plop up that 24 spot. So you feel better, but you're scoring way less per quarter? And it's spread out, one touchdown a quarter compared to in one quarter taking control and beating them down and punching them? Bloody nose? Crushing their confidence? Now they're gone from the game? Because, like, how the hell do we come back when their defense is beating our offensive line as good as they are? See what I'm saying? So if it's couple touchdowns in one quarter or the same amount of touchdowns throughout the entirety of the game does that change your view on it if we start seeing an offense in a different scenario it's almost like we're complaining that the eagles are winning in one way by blowing a team out and then kind of playing a different approach later on imagine that Text message is coming in. Jay, is Devontae Smith actually better than A.J. Brown? Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. Uh, I, I think A.J. Brown is a way more polished professional right now. Is the ceiling of Devontae Smith better than A.J. Brown, which would be a damn good ceiling? I think you can make the argument. 
I mean, at the end of the day, I, I believe they're probably in the same exact category. They're probably going to end up being, while different receivers, the same sort of production. It will just maybe be, I mean, come on. Devontae Smith is now high point in the football over two defenders. That body frame, he's mossing people and jumping over their soles as a string bean, and it's unreal to watch. A.J. Brown right now more polished. And just understands, I think, everything, what it's like to be a wide receiver and all the finer details of the game right now. But I think the ceiling for Devontae at some point could maybe be even significantly better. And that's no knock on A.J. Brown. I think that's more telling us maybe what Devontae Smith can do. Malik wants to know, if I am scared of Jacksonville, does Jacksonville scare you? Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence might fig- might be figuring something out. It opened up as a touchdown favorite. Line starting to move based off of where the money's coming in now. I don't know if they cover, but I see them going for it. No, they don't scare me. Is today today to break down Eagles Jags? No, not necessarily. But um, no, I'm not afraid of Dougie P. No, not in this house. Oh, oh, oh that's gonna be fun. Thank you guys all so much for hanging out with me. You guys are the best. If you're new, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one.